Working from home is becoming more and more popular by the day. I thought with the new year coming around, I would make a beginner guide to starting a YouTube channel because I know a lot of my followers want to start one and just kind of want some help and guidance on where they can start. And I wanted to provide you guys a one-stop shop where you could just watch this video and just learn all the basics and necessities and especially how I started my channel when I first started. When I first started, I literally started vlogging on my phone and I had a little handheld tripod and that's just kind of how I started. And I edited on my phone. I made everything for my YouTube channel on my phone. But yeah, next year will be four years on YouTube for me. So I thought I've had a little bit of experience. I just thought I would show you guys how I started, what I use, and just kind of give you guys a beginner guide on starting a YouTube channel in the most simple, easiest way I could possibly do that. share with you guys what I think is a good way to start your YouTube channel or just to get you up and running. It's very easy to learn. It's really not as complicated as everybody makes it out to be. There's so many YouTube videos on how to do it and that's exactly how I taught myself. I literally taught myself by watching YouTube videos. So I'm hoping this video will give you guys some insight on what it takes to be a YouTuber and also just kind of how you can start your YouTube channel if you do want to do so. So before we get into this video, I do want to kind of just talk about some of the emotional tolls that I've had to go through and just kind of talk about what I've experienced as being a YouTuber and give you guys a heads up on what it actually means to be a YouTuber rather than just telling you guys how to do one and then you get into it and you already have grown a following and it's too late to back out. I mean, it's, it's never too late to back out. YouTube is not something that you know you have to continuously do. So to be a YouTuber, it is going to take a lot of time and consistency. So I will say whenever I first started YouTube, it was not as demanding as it is on me now. Now I work with brands, I edit my videos, I'm a full-time YouTuber, so I'm having to post twice a week. I really honestly should be posting more than twice a week, but right now twice a week is just what works for me. So that's a lot of time and energy that goes into editing. Once you already have your platform built for you, it gets to a point where it gets hard to maintain that platform or to keep up with that platform because social media is literally just growing so fastly. Make sure to staying on top of everything, make sure you're giving good content for people to watch content that they're going to enjoy you have to also understand what it takes to have a platform you know or what comes with having a platform whenever you do have a platform you're opening up the book for anybody to just say anything and everything about you you know you can obviously comment back and do that and everything but you have to understand that by you posting people are going to have opinions about your life people are going to say things about your life i know for me personally i had to be careful with what i would post about my family because of my mom's work as well as my sister's work so i always i couldn't just necessarily just film whenever i wanted wanted to or you know have whatever I wanted into my videos now as I'm an adult so I can do what I want and I'm also in my own apartment but yeah you just have to really realize that you're putting yourself out there like if you want to have a public social media job on the internet you're putting yourself out there for people to know what they want about you to say what they want about you you know just to all those things like you're opening those doors basically I also just kind of wanted to include I'm not necessarily saying that like it's okay you see constantly online some of the things that people will get in trouble before and just things like that. People do have to understand at the end of the day, influencers are regular people who make mistakes as well. But whenever you are like an influencer, it's almost like you're held to this like category of like not being able to fuck up or not being able to do mistakes or do dumb things because immediately your whole entire platform plus some is going to be mad at you and trying to let you know that you did wrong. And it's like sometimes people don't realize that influencers are just normal people as well. So sometimes that can be a lot to handle for different people. If you don't take public hate very well or you're a very anxious person I definitely think this would be something that you would need to really take into consideration because it can cause you a lot of mental health problems so if you're not really ready to have all the opinions on your life or to have all these people eyeballing you everything you do, you have to take that into consideration. You know, maybe that isn't something that I'm really okay with and think about, well then maybe YouTube really isn't something that would be the best for me because I'm not really ready to be out like that publicly. Another thing I would have to say is how much time actually goes into specifically my YouTube videos and kind of what I've experienced. Definitely not how it's going to be for every YouTuber. I just know with how I edit my videos, and the style that I have for my channel, it can take me anywhere from three hours to 12 hours to edit a video. And I'm not even exaggerating. Sometimes I can edit a video and it won't take me any time at all. It'll just be done just like that, right? And then other videos will take me so much time. And then, you know, do you have the patience to sit there and edit that video all day or to take that long to edit that video all day? I would also say that with being a YouTuber and being a social media influencer, I guess you could say, it is very, very hard to separate work from home 
home. I work from home, you know, like it's very hard to do that. So sometimes I'll damage almost my personal relationships with people because I'm not investing enough into my personal relationships because it is so easy to get caught away with work. Like I will spend a whole day editing a video. Christian will finally get home from work at five o'clock and I'll still be editing because I'm not done yet. You know, like my work is a 24 seven thing. Like I'm always, always working. There's just a lot of like emotional drainage that can come with having a YouTube. And are you ready to open that can of worms basically for your life? But first thing I wanted to talk about is how to create your YouTube account. So this one's kind of self-explanatory. Most of you guys, if you're watching this video, you know how to make a YouTube account. But for this one, you're literally just going to go and make a Gmail. And then pretty much after that, like that's how you make your YouTube channel. You just go and then like make an account. I will say whenever you are making your channel name, like if this is something that you want to happen long term, then I think that you should really come up with a name that you can see lasting a long time. At first, my first channel name was Fit Fab Sav because I was like on a little workout hook. I am not a workout person. I don't work out really like that anymore. I wish I was. I'm like, I want to get back into it. But that is like, I couldn't have had a whole channel that was like fit fab sab because it just didn't fit me. You know, that wasn't something that I was going to continuously do long term. So I ended up changing it. But I remember I put my name into a generator. That was literally how I came up with my name, y'all. I put it into a generator and it put Savway and I was like, this is actually really cute. Like I think I had like two other options that I was deciding between the three, but then I put Savway and it just fit and it stuck. And that's just what I've had ever since. So when creating your YouTube account, you definitely want to have a banner and a photo. So the photo is really easy. Just pick a photo of yourself or whatever you want and then just upload it. And then that will be your YouTube picture. But banners are something different. So banners are kind of like the little thing that is at the top of your YouTube channel whenever you open it up. I'm going to show you guys how to make two different kinds. So I'm going to show you guys how to make this version, the one that I have on my profile. And then I'm also going to show you guys how to make just like a really simple one that just says your name. So to do your YouTube banner, firstly, you're going to want to go to Safari and look up YouTube banner template. You're just gonna go to images and you're just gonna find whatever template that you want to use and add that to my photos And then the apps that I use for my banners is Fonto So what I'll do is I'll go into Fonto and I will insert my little picture And then I'll go into this little side three bar and I'll press add item And I'm just gonna take one of the little squares and I'm going to change the size of it So I want it to be long and width enough to cover up this little area right here And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put another one and I'm gonna change the side and make the width really long So that way it covers that whole entire part so for me personally i like to just have like a plain color so to do that you just press add item i'm gonna just change the color that i want i have like a beige background as mine so that's what i'm gonna just use i'm gonna try to maybe make this one a bit less yellowy so now i have this kind of covered but i don't want to actually just put that there just yet because i'm gonna go ahead and take another and i'm gonna put this one and just change the color to like gray or whatever and i'm gonna change the size and width to be exactly this middle part because i want my words to stay into this middle part. That's kind of like what the whole point of this line is. It's just to kind of mark off where that middle part is because all of my, like my pictures that I'm gonna use and all of my words and stuff, I want to stay in that middle area. So to make the banner that I have right now, I'm gonna go into add image and I'm gonna press my face and then I'm gonna press the circle. So the circle is basically just going to make that little profile photo. So I'm gonna zoom in to kind of however much I want it. And then I'm gonna press done. And this will be my little profile photo. So I'm gonna just make it smaller. I'm gonna have it kind of starting about right there. And then I have my name so I have it like Savannah Joe so I'm gonna just go in and type my name Savannah Joe and I'm gonna press font and you can use whatever I think the font that I used in this one was menthol signature personal use so I'm gonna just press that one I'm also gonna show you guys how to import font so don't worry about that but I'm just gonna change the size I'm also gonna change it I go into pressing style and I'm gonna change it to black and then I just have my YouTube channel name in the font Helvetica new bold italic and I just have lowercase Savway spaced out and then just adjust it to be however I want so that's kind of how I have it on my thumbnail that I have now. Then in order to put your social medias on there, I just have my Instagram and my Snapchat. So I'm going to just go to Safari, Black, Circle, Instagram, PNG. Then I'm going to just use the first one. You want to make sure though, whenever you click it, the thing changes. So like how this one was white, whenever I pressed on it, it went to that little checkered background. You want it to do that or else it's not going to actually be the PNG. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to press add image, add my Instagram. I'm going to just change the size to it to be really small. I'm gonna go in and add the snapchat one and just do the exact same thing make it really small And then now I'm just gonna go in and add text and I'm just gonna go in and put my instagram name I'm gonna change this to black and then I'm gonna also do my snapchat name So that's basically kind of how I added them then you're just gonna want to save it 
So banner number two is gonna pretty much be the exact same way. You're just gonna repeat all of the process, except you're not gonna add the profile pic. You're just going to go straight to the name and you're only going to do Savway and you're just gonna kind of have it spread out. So you're gonna do letter, space, letter, space. And then I just added a shadow to it. I didn't show it in the video, but it's just really easy. You just go in and you put a shadow and just change the opacity of it and that'll kind of make it be a lighter color. Once I finished making the banner, I just went to YouTube and I pressed that little pencil and I just went ahead and pressed the banner and added mine into it. And I just refreshed my page and there my new banner was. As you can see, the first one was a little bit more yellow. So I had to go back in and redo that. It is a lot later in the night. I kind of had to take a little break. I edited the footage that I did already have and that kind of took me a really long time. So now it's a little bit later and I'm finally getting back into filming this video. But now we're gonna start with what do you need to actually film your video? If you have a camera, that's great, but this is probably not gonna be the video for you. I'm gonna be showing you guys in this video how to do everything from your phone. I have the iPhone 11 Pro Max now, but when I first started my YouTube channel, I used the iPhone X. For lighting, you can really honestly use so many different things. I know in the past I used my vanity lights because I had a really big vanity so if you do have a vanity definitely use that to your advantage but I also in the past have used lamps I would just take the lamp shade off and just kind of use that light I've also used some really affordable ring lights on Amazon but you can find ring lights anywhere from like Walmart Target literally anywhere if you don't have Amazon I know there's some at like Ross Marshalls TJ Maxx so you just have to really find around and look but I do want to say that you do not need lighting whatsoever you can 100% just use natural light but I wouldn't recommend necessarily using just like your inside lights I would suggest just having at least something because it will help the quality to be a bit better considering you are using your phone. Elf actually has this little ring light right here. It's like $8, but you can basically just prop it onto your phone and film like this and that'll give you pretty good lighting. So some really easy videos that you guys could film are first starting off with a day in my life. I've made a ton of these on my channel and they always seem to do really well. So that would definitely be a really good video to start with. Another one would be like morning or night routines. Also, if you're in school, definitely cater to that. Vlogs at school, I did a video where I had Instagram choose kind of like what I did throughout the day. I also did like weeks in my life, weekends in my life. If you're in cheer or you're in any type of sports activity, you can film like get ready with me's for game days. Or if you're just kind of going as a fan, you can still do a get ready with me for a game day. Um, so there's definitely many different videos that you can do. And if you are in school, definitely cater towards that. But yeah, the one thing I will say, do not start with a get to know me video. If you are gonna do a get to know me video, I would suggest doing like a get ready with me slash get to know me. But I would suggest starting with other videos and then kind of working your way up and building that following and then doing a get to know me video. So now we're gonna be moving into editing. So I'm gonna be showing you guys the basic edits that you need to know. I'm gonna also be talking about how you can import music for free and how you can do a hack to add in different words. So I'm basically just gonna be covering all of the basics. So to start, you're just gonna go into iMovie and you're gonna press create project movie and then you're just gonna go in and add your clip and then press create movie. So to do a simple cut, all you're gonna do is go and find wherever you wanna cut. You're gonna press actions, split, and then you can just find wherever you either wanna cut it or you can also just drag it and do that way. But another way would be to just find the spot that you want to split again, press split, then grab it and press delete. If you wanted to do a little zoom in, you would go and just figure out wherever you want it to zoom in, press split, and you're going to go back and grab that clip and press that little magnifying glass at the top. Then you're basically just going to pinch to zoom wherever you want it to do that, press that magnifying glass again, and then go back and press play and it should just kind of like zoom in. 
If you guys want to go ahead and add text, you're just going to again split it wherever you want the text to pop up. Then you're going to just go into titles, press whatever one that you want to do. I'm just going to do chromatic. I'm going to go in, press edit, and then I'm just going to type whatever I want. I'm just going to say hi just for the sake of the video. And then basically you're just going to go in and kind of pinch it and then grab it to move it wherever you want. Once you do that, whenever you go back and press play, it'll basically just kind of do that. However, if you do want it to be like a fixed word, you're going to have to go in and do a green screen. So this is where the hacks come into play if you would like the words to kind of look like the ones that i do you're going to want to go back into fonto and you're going to press plain image grab whatever color press custom and then go 1280 by 720 and then you're going to change the color to be a green color and then you're going to go in and type whatever you want it to say so again we're just going to do hi the font that i use is helvetica new bold italic or i'll use helvetica new condensed bold those are pretty much the two fonts that i will go in between and then i'm going to go to the style and change it to white i'm going to then change the size and then drag it to wherever I want it to pop up. You want to make sure it kind of goes into the corner or about wherever the video that you want it to be because it's going to be a green screen. So whenever it goes in, it's going to be fixed at that one spot. So you're going to just press save image, go back into iMovie, grab the clip that you want it to go over, go to photos, grab your photo, and then you're going to press those three little dots and do green slash blue screen. So wherever you want your picture to pop up, you're just going to want to move it over that way. And then whenever you go to play it, it's going to kind of pop up like this. So that's kind of a way that you can hack the words if you don't like the fonts or you don't like the way they pop up or things like that you can do it that way and then i also want to show you guys that you can have pictures pop up on the video or you can also have pictures pop up side by side so if you wanted to have a picture pop up in the video you're just going to click your picture press the three dots and then go to picture in picture and this will kind of have it to pop up like this and you can move the picture around put it wherever you want it to go and you can also add a border or take the border away then if you wanted to have it side by side you would just press that image again press the three dots and then do split screen. A split screen would literally do exactly what it says and it would just pop it up on the side. Now I wanted to show you guys how you could get music off of YouTube and download it into iMovie for free. So basically you're just going to go to the YouTube app and then type in non-copyright music. I'm just going to go ahead and use this non-copyrighted music by Janae and Bryson and I'm just going to go in, press share, and then copy that link. You're going to then go into Safari and type in mp3 converter. I just used the first one that popped up but all you're going to do is just go in, paste that link, press search, and then go down to audio and press download on the first one. Once it downloads, you're gonna press that little download button and then the save button and press save to files. I save it to my iMovie folder and then I go to iMovie, I go to audio, my music, files, and then I press the audio clip. This will then import the song that you chose into your iMovie and you can go in and make it louder or softer. I just like to have it very low so that way it just kind of faintly plays in the background of my videos. Or say I wanna cut this part and I want it to kind of be like a speed through, I would just cut wherever I want it and then I would grab the speed I would speed it up and then I would have the music just play at a regular volume behind it so then that way it's like a time lapse of something that I was doing and I wanted to mention that you can do that exact same thing with sound effects so if you want it to be like a mouse click whenever you pop up a word all you'd have to do is just go and download a mouse click sound effect although iMovie is very like a simple platform to edit on it doesn't have a lot like Final Cut Pro is what I use now and it has all the sound effects all the edits everything like that in the software iMovie doesn't have all of that but you can still hack ways to have your videos be really edited and look like some of your favorite youtubers videos so now I'm going to go ahead and get into thumbnails and the apps that I personally use to do mine. So to start off, you're going to want to go into photos, click your video, and you're just going to find a point that you want to screenshot for your thumbnail. I'm just finding a random one for the sake of the video, but you're just going to screenshot it and crop it to be the thumbnail. So for editing my thumbnails, I can use up to five different apps. So the first app that I'll always use is Fonto. The second one that I'll always use is Collegeable. Then if I want to make a PNG or cut anything out, I'll sometimes use Eraser, but I honestly stopped using Eraser that much because now I can use Pixar to do that. So Pixar has definitely become an app that I use more regularly and doing my thumbnails now, but there's so many different things that you can do in Pixar and I actually paid for the upgraded version, but I did use the free version at first. And then sometimes if I have a blemish or I want to whiten my teeth or just adjust the saturation or brightness of the video, I will use Facetune. So firstly, I'm going to go into Pixar and I'm going to grab my thumbnail. So say you want to outline something, you can click brushes, go to this first little one at the front, press whatever color you want to use. Usually I'll just use white and I'll turn it down to be like 
like a size 5, 10, whatever I want to do. And then basically you'll just go in and outline it this way. This way is the more like tedious, time consuming way. But if you want to hack to outline your stuff, press cancel. I'm going to go ahead and press cut out. And then I'm going to do outline and I'm going to just outline whatever I want to be cut out. Then I'm going to just press save and next. And then I save it to my photos. Then I'm going to go back to that add sign and I'm going to just re-add in my regular thumbnail. And I'm going to go to add photo. Click that PNG that we made. Press add. And then you're just going to put it over the original one that you had. And you can do add shadow, which is basically just going to have this little background. And what I like to do is position it to be a little bit more horizontally in. And then I'm going to also go to border. And this is kind of the hack to do the outline. I'm just going to go in and kind of make it smaller. But I'm just going to press apply. And then that way it kind of looks like that. I would usually make it look way better than this. It never looks like this bad. But that's just kind of how you were to do it. I also like to use Pixart for adding stickers. So if I want to add any emojis or anything like that I would just go in and type whatever emoji I want to add and then I'm just going to pick whichever one and again you can also add the shadow to it and you can also add the border as well then I would just save it and I would go into Fonto go to photo albums and import that picture then I usually add text in Fonto so Fonto is what I use to do any of my text so I'm going to go in and I'm going to press what I got my family for Christmas and I'm going to just go to curve I want this to be kind of curved and then I'm going to press size and just adjust the sizing and then I'm going to go into style press stroke and adjust the stroke to be about a 10 or a 15, just depending on what I want. Then I'm gonna go into style and I'm gonna do the second one behind the white one. And I'm just gonna have it be black and blurry like that at the end. If I wanna add in little words, I'll just add in text and be like, I'm gonna put like shoes. And then I would just kind of have the little word and I would make it about like a 40 or a 35 or something like that. And then you can also add in background. If you don't want it to be blurry, you can just have it be like that. And you can also add a stroke as well. And then it would just kind of look like that. But that's pretty much how I do my thumbnails. It's really, really simple. Honestly, I just kind of like learn as I go. And if I have a question, again, I'll just watch a YouTube video. So that's the basics that you guys need to know about thumbnails. So now I'm going to show you guys a really simple and easy way that you can do a outro and intro. Fonto is like my best friend. I love using this app. So all I'm going to do is press plain image. And I'm going to go in again and adjust the settings to be 1280, 720. And then you're going to kind of want to press whatever color that you want. So I'm going to do pink just for the sake of the video. And it's just going to give you this blank canvas. So now what you're going to want to do is type in your channel name or if it's just your regular first name and last name. Then I'm just going to go into size and I'm just going to adjust it and have it however big or small that I want it. You can add shadows create it make it colorful do literally whatever you want to do and you can do that all in style i'm just going to personally leave it white but all you're going to do is just press save this is very very simple guys for the outro it's literally going to be the exact same thing so i'm just going to delete what i had typed and i'm just going to type in thank you for watching i'm just going to adjust that to whatever size i want and i'm going to go ahead and add a little text that says subscribe and i'm also going to add another one that says watch more this way whenever you go and do the end screen you can add a profile pic to show subscribe and you can add a video to show like watch more so people can click on that but then i'm going to go into iMovie and i'm just going to press that plus sign to add it to my timeline and it will kind of move so you're going to want to disable those key burns and then crop it to be wherever you want and that will kind of stop it from moving but same thing with the outro you're just going to add it in there with that plus sign disable the key burns adjust it to wherever you want it and then just play it and it will kind of just sit like that so I wanted to share some kind of final words that I had for you guys whenever you're starting your YouTube channel. I think I gave you guys enough tools to be able to start your own YouTube channel going into 2022. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys some final words that I had and just some final thought. First one being, I honestly do not think that you guys should invest into a YouTube channel until you start to feel like it's something that you're gonna stay consistent with. I know sometimes the idea of starting a YouTube channel can be like so amazing, but if you do not keep up with the YouTube channel, there's no point in spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on YouTube equipment if you're not going to make it like a career thing or make it a more serious thing. Kind of what I told myself was like, I'm gonna film on my phone, I'm gonna just use all free stuff and I'm just gonna find a way to hack it until this becomes a more serious thing. Then whenever I started to actually like make money off of YouTube and it started to become a more serious thing and I knew I was gonna be doing it for a long time, that's when I invested into my YouTube channel. And even at first, I still used iMovie. I just upgraded to like using my parents' laptop and I had a camera, but it did take me a while to actually 
actually purchase a editing software just because I was really comfortable using iMovie and it was cheap and I didn't have to pay anything and I could just hack everything. But it just was a lot more time consuming because I did have to hack everything. So definitely I do say that is a plus with using Final Cut is that it just all the stuff's incorporated into the software and I don't have to go and do all these downloads or go and do all these different things and add them into my video. I also wanted to say that growing your channel can take a long time. So this is something that you're going to really need to be consistent in and also have the patience for. You can have like a growth spurt and do really well and then all of a sudden next month you're not really doing that well. Your watch time is decreasing and just your views are going down and you, you know just sometimes you get into those droughts but do not be scared or anything like that. That's going to happen. You just have to keep being consistent and you have to just keep going. But yeah it could take a while for your channel to grow. It might not happen overnight and it might happen overnight. Honestly that's what happened to me. That's what happened to a lot of people. Some people it was a continuous steady grow and then other people's they literally just got famous like overnight and they just were really lucky. It's literally just the luck of the draw so just stay with it, be patient and just be consistent. When I first started off I tried to post as much as I could or like as often as I could so I would also recommend that. You don't want to do like an overflow of content but it definitely would be good to post as much content out there as you can or as you're like available to because I think that would help to like reel in subscribers faster and also people do like watching people who constantly post. You know like people like being able to click on YouTube and their favorite person always posting a new video. So definitely posting as much as you can or what you're able to. But yeah, that's everything that I kind of wanted to talk about. I'm really, really excited. YouTube is definitely something that's very fun. I don't want to scare you guys from doing it, but I just kind of want to set you guys up to know, you know, exactly what you're getting yourself into. So if you do want to start a YouTube channel, I really hope you guys found this video to be useful. Let me know in the comments down below if you did or did not find it useful and why. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and also comment the Christmas tree emoji if you watched until this point. I have my Christmas tree lit up in the back. So if I was like flashing or anything while I was filming this, that's why. But it's so cute. I'm so excited for Christmas. But yeah, with all that being said, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Good luck on your channels.